Hello students, welcome to the third video on the topic soaps, detergent and waxes which is a part of the general chemistry for second semester chemistry. Myself, Dr. Savita, Department of Chemistry. In the earlier two videos, we have learned the definition of soap, the type of the soap, and in the second video, we have learned the manufacture of soap by hot process. We have also looked into the advantages, disadvantages, and the limitation of the soap. In the third video, the contents are as follows the detergents, the types, and great examples. So, the detergents or synthetic soap like substances which are cleansing agents. These detergents, which are also called as Sindren, were first introduced in USC and UK in 1920s and their development have replaced about 80% of the world demand for soap. A synthetic detergent is any synthetic substance other than a soap that is an effective cleanser and apart from that it also functions as a surface active agent in hard or soft water. So it is a non-soapy cleaning zinc agent which cleans by the process of lowering the surface tension of an aqueous cleansing mixture. So let us define the detergents. So detergents are sodium salts of long chain sulfonates and sulfate. The charged end of this compound will not form an insoluble precipitate with the calcium and magnesium ions in the hard water as we have seen with the soap. So, or in the other way to define a detergent is, a detergent is a water-soluble cleansing agent which combines with the impurities, remove the dirt, make more soluble and then the soap and this does not form a scum with the salts in the hard water. And detergents are surfactants produced from petrochemicals. They lower the surface tension of water and as a result, the wetting process becomes easier and they have a better interaction with oil or grease. They are mainly derived from synthetic chemicals, rather the chemicals from the natural resources like oils and fats which were used in the preparation of the soaps and hence these detergents we call them to be synthetic detergent and hence these detergents they are the sodium salts of long chain sulfonates and sulfates and not of the sodium salt of fat or oil. So detergents the definitions are sodium salt of an alkyl hydrogen sulfate or a sodium salt of an alkyl benzene sulfonate or is considered to be as a detergent. For example, a sodium salt of an alkyl sulfate or an alkyl benzene sulfonate group is called as a detergent and here the R can be C12 to C18 carbon atoms. 
So coming to the nature of the detergent, like the soaps, the detergents have a long non-polar end, which is called as a tail, an oil soluble, water insoluble, and hence it is called as a hydrophobic and a small moiety which is hydrophilic in nature which is called as a head and hence because of the presence of both hydrophobic and hydrophilic nature in a detergent we call such a type of molecule to be amphifatic. So, unlike the soap, as already said, they do not contain the salts of long chain carboxylic acid. A few examples for detergents are sodium alkyl sulfate sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate either they can be a sodium salt of an alkyl sulfate or a sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate an example for a sodium alkyl sulfate is the detergent sodium lauryl sulfate and the structure of sodium lauryl sulfate is as follows where we have a polar end which is a water soluble head and a long non polar end which is oil soluble. And the other example for sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate is sodium N dodecyl benzene sulfonate. And this is the structure once again where we have a hydrophobic here we have an extra benzene ring and once again we have a hydrophilic which is a water soluble few examples for the detergent and here we are going to classify the detergents depending on the electric charge that is present on the detergent when they have a negative charge, we consider them to be anionic. Having a positive charge, we call them to be a cationic. Without any charge, we call them to be non-ionic detergents. Now let us study each of them. Coming to the anionic detergents. So this anionic detergents are the sodium salts of sulfonated long chain alcohols or hydrocarbons. Here, alkyl hydrogen sulfate when are formed by treating long chain alcohol with concentrated sulfuric acid followed by neutralization with alkali results in their formation of an anionic detergent. Similarly, alkyl benzene sulfonate are obtained by neutralizing the alkyl benzene sulfonic acid with an alkali. So, in the case of anionic detergent, we have two types. One is unbranched and other is a branch. Unbranched is often a linear and the branched is where we have a multiple branching. This branched chain detergents are banned because of their poor biodegradability. This anionic detergent are highly effective in acidic solution. So in a slightly acidic solution where we cannot use the soaps, this anionic detergent for a soluble material, as a result, even in the acidic condition, the dirt or grease can be removed. So, anionic detergent coming to its mechanism, 
the anionic part of the molecule is involved in the cleansing action and the sodium salt of alkyl benzene sulfate a classical example for an anionic detergent and coming to the applications they are mainly used for household work and this anionic detergent are also used in toothpaste so the example for an anion detergent is sodium para and dodecyl benzene sulfonate which is commonly called as sts and other is the uh, alkyl benzene alkyl sulfonate which is also an example for an anionic detergent coming to the second category that is the cationic detergent this cationic detergents are generally called as invert soap or detergent and they are water soluble and as the name indicate here they have a positive charge so cationic detergents are quaternary ammonium salts of amines with uh, acetic chloride or bromide which act as an anion so when we compare with your anionic cationic detergents are very similar but instead of a negative charge they carry a positive charge on the quaternary nitrogen and that is the polar end the other long chain is the non polar end and cationic will have a positive charge on the nitrogen atom and hence we consider them to be a cationic detergent so the common example for a cationic detergent is cetyl trimethyl ammonium bromide a popular cationic detergent which is commonly employed in the air conditioner they are very good cleansing agent and the special property they possess is the germicidal that is they can kill bacterial and hence these are widely employed or used in hospitals for cleansing action particularly the surgical instrument and it also act as a sterilizing agent so this cationic detergent because of the germicidal property they are highly expensive and the usage is also limited and examples for cationic detergents are as follows benzyl cetyl dimethyl ammonium chloride cetyl trimethyl ammonium chloride so here we have a benzene ring here we have a trimethyl with a positive charge on the nitrogen that is the quaternary and hence we the examples for the cationic detergents coming to the non ionic detergents this non ionic detergents they are characteristic with without any charge on the hydrophilic Group. So, when come to the nature, they are the esters of high molecular weight, which is formed between a polyethylene glycol and the stearic acid. So, generally, a non-ionic detergent will have either a polyethylene glycol or a glycoside. So, what is a glycoside? It is a molecule. having a sugar moiety as the uncharged hydrophilic head group so we had a nitrogen group carrying a positive charge in a cationic here we have a glycosides with a sugar moiety without any charge and hence these are called as non ionic detergents so non ionic detergent as already said they don't carry any charge so they also considered as bitter ionic detergents 
because of charge is that charge is zero that is due to presence of equal number of positive and negative which nullifies giving no charge on a non-ionic detergent example the best example for a non-ionic detergent is taps it is an abbreviation for a 33-chloroamidopropyl dimethyl ammonio 1 propane sulfonate. So the TAPS is a zwitter ionic surfactant which is exclusively used in the laboratory, the particularly biological laboratory where we want to solubilize the macromolecules such as a protein. Apart from the liquid dishwashing detergents are also non-ionic type. And when you look at the mechanism of cleansing action, it is very similar to that of a soap. They remove the oil or grease by characteristic mesial formation which we are going to discuss in the next video. Coming to the applications of the detergent. So, this can be categorized under three headings. One is household cleaning, second is fuel additive, third is the biological reagent. So, household cleaning we know very well. This detergents are employed in like dishwashing, washing laundry purpose, etc. The second application is fuel additive. So, we keep the carburetors and fuel injector components of auto engines. A auto engine is a stationary single cylinder internal combustion for a four stroke engine. Small quantity of detergents are added to the fuel and this fuel acts as an additive with the detergent. And the next application is the biological reagent. So for breaking the cells in the biological laboratory, generally detergents are being employed. So let us learn the in detail the action of the detergents. So as we all know, the hard water contains calcium and magnesium ions. So when we add the common soap is added to a water, this calcium and magnesium ions react with the soap results in the formation of a scum which can be an insoluble calcium or a magnesium. So this is the scenario whenever a soap is used with a hard water. On the other hand, when a synthetic detergent or the detergents are used, they are superior. The reason because they do not form any scum or insoluble complex, but they are soluble in hard water. So calcium and magnesium salts of detergents are water soluble. And hence the washing here is easier when we compare the washing with the soaps with the hard water. So let us glance the advantages of the detergent. As already explained, synthetic detergent can be used in the hard water without any wastage because they do not form any scum whereas the soap get wasted in the hard water. And the second advantage is here the synthetic detergent can be used even in the acidic media whereas the soaps get precipitated in acidic media. The synthetic de detergent decreases the surface tension of water to a greater extent, extent and hence 
they have a stronger cleaning action than the soap. As detergents are derived from petroleum, they save on natural vegetable oils which were employed in the manufacture of soap and this can be driven for the other better uses like cooking media. And the other advantage or the next advantage is they are cost effective, easy to rinse, they fight the tub stains, do not have harsh chemicals and it is suitable for different water qualities soft water, hard water, or any type of the waters. Detergents can be used for washing woolen garments, whereas soaps cannot be used. And detergents which are linear, they are biodegradable, and hence they are eco-friendly. However, Detergents have also a few disadvantages. The major disadvantage of a detergent is the branched hydrocarbons, which we have seen in the anionic synthetic detergents. They are not completely degradable, that is, they are non biodegradable. So, this branched chain detergent molecules will be degraded very, very slowly with the microorganisms that are present in the sewage water or the septic tanks or water body. As a result, this detergent can persist in water for a longer time and hence they make the water unfit for aquatic life and cause the water pollution. And this is the major concern with the branched hydrocarbon synthetic detergent. As a result, nowadays the detergents are made up of molecules where we keep the branching to be very, very minimum and when the branching is minimum, they are degraded more efficiently than the branch chain detergent. And this is the major concern or the major disadvantage of a detergent. And because of the reasons which are explained, because of the presence of the branched detergent for a longer time, it results in soil and water pollution, that is, they are not eco-friendly. And we know, whenever we use excessive alkali, which is used in some of the detergent, can damage the fabric. And the same thing is also applied when we take the color. The color of the fabric can run out when we use a cheaper variety because of the presence of excessive alkali. So, when excess alkali is used in the detergent, obviously, more amount of water is required to remove the foam. Otherwise, it not only damages the fabric, but also can cause the skin damage when we wear it. The last disadvantage of the detergents are, detergents are costlier than soaps. So, these are the few disadvantages of detergent. So, in this session, we have learned what is a detergent, what is the action of detergent types, advantages and disadvantages of the detergent. And these are the references for this chapter. Thank you.